Hey everybody, this is chapter one, section three, um, in our Math to Eleven Elements of Geometry or Geometry textbook. And it's going to deal with points, lines, and planes. Basically, we're going to look at a lot of the basic undefined terms in this section. Okay, so in the previous section, I talked about um, creating a notebook, because when we look at geometry, we're going to have different parts. The first parts that we're going to define are your undefined terms. So hopefully um, you've created a section for your undefined terms. I think that would be the best way to organize something. And we are going to um, start with our first undefined term. Excuse me, and it is a point, um, the most basic geometry term we have. And a point has no dimension, no length, no width or height. It doesn't have a location. Um, excuse me, it does have a location or position. So basically what a point does is it names a location. It doesn't matter how big or how small the dot is. It really just names your location. So um, we have here point A, which is right here. There's point A, um, but any point, any capital letter. So, you know, I can make point C here. doesn't matter again, how big or how small the dot is. You don't really measure the dimension of the dot. It's just naming a location or a position. Um, and when you do name a point again by a single capital letter, so here's a good example right here, where you could write out point A. That's our first undefined term. So this would be under undefined. All right, and here is our second undefined term, and this one is for a line. We talked briefly about a line in the other section. So a line extends in opposite directions without end and has one dimension length. Um, now, one thing to mention with a line, because the line extends in um, opposite directions without end, while it has length, you can't measure a line. You can measure a line segment, which we'll talk about later. Um, when you name a line, you can name it by a single lowercase letter. So here you can see they have the L there. They named it line L. So you can write it like that. Or you can pick any two points on the line. doesn't matter what two points you have. If there's only two, you use both. If there are more than two, you can pick any two points on the line and you use the capital letters because you're using the points and then you put just a small line symbol over the top. So if I were to draw another line, and unfortunately when I draw on this board, it doesn't make it straight, but you know, I'm going to put, I'm going to make this point C, let's see, we got point D and E. So when I go to name this line, I could name it line you know, DE, I could name it line CD or CE. Um, if I put, you know, an N there, I can name it line N. Um, lots of different ways to name a line, but those are examples. And this is also an undefined term, so it will go in that undefined section. All right, our third undefined term that we are going to talk about today is a plane, and a plane extends in two dimensions without end. Um, the two dimensions that it has are length and width. So now we went from no dimensions with the point um, to length with a line, and now we have length and we have width. Um, but a plane has no thickness, and we often represent a plane by a flat surface. I always think of like, think of the top of a piece of paper. That would be a plane or the top of a table. Um, but the main thing is that a plane can extend on in both dimensions without end, so with length and width. Even though, you know, like a sheet of paper ends, really the whole plane goes on infinitely. Um, to name a plane, you can either name it by a single capital letter. So, for instance, down here we have P. That's how we would name it. Um, or you can name it by any three points on a plane, as long as all three points are not what we call collinear, so they can't all be on the same line. Um, so when we name this, we have A and C are on one line and B is not, so we could call it plane ABC or plane P. But when you name it with just a single letter, it's not one of the points on the plane, it's just a single letter you've defined for the plane. All right, so here we have five questions, and I want you to use the picture right here 
and try to answer those questions. Um, take a second, pause the video, try to answer those questions. Write two other ways to name line QT. Write two other ways to name line P. Um, I want you to name three points that are collinear. Collinear means they're all in the same line. Then name three points that are coplanar. If it's coplanar, it means they're all in the same plane. And then name three points that are not collinear. So take a second, do that, and then um, come back and we'll take a look at the answers. Okay, so now I want you to check your answers. Hopefully you took some time to um, answer the questions. Two other ways to name line QT. So here is line QT right here. If you'll notice, it actually goes through the plane. So one other way to name it, they have a little M right here. So we could call it line M. Or remember, the order of the um, points doesn't matter. The only two points on that line are Q and T, but I can name it line TQ. All right, now we need two other ways to write name plane to name plane P. So we can again use our letters. So I'm going to call it plane. Um, let's see here. R Q V. Because you have to use three letters that aren't all in the same line. So here are my three letters that aren't all in the same line. Or I could call it plain SVR. Um, or I could do QSV. Um, the only letter you can't use when naming this plane is T because this line goes through the plane and T is not actually on the line. Let me do a little erasing so you can see the drawing better now. Okay, next we need to name three points that are collinear. So three points that are all in a line. And that would be for this one, here's our line where we have three points in a line. So three points that are collinear would be points R, point Q, and point S. All right, four points that are coplanar, all in the same plane. All right, we're going to have, again, point R, point Q, point S, and then point V. Those are our four collinear points or coplanar points. And then name three points that are not collinear, so three points that are not on the same line. Um, I'm going to use point T, and then I can do point R and point V. There, none of those are on the same line. Or you could say something like um, you could do R, T, and S, even though R and S are on the same line, T is not, so that would work. Or you could do like T, Q, and V, or you could say T, Q, and S, they would not be collinear as well. So lots of different combinations there. All right, our next undefined term. So this is our fourth undefined term is, um, first we have space. And space is the set of all points in three dimensions. Um, this is something, I'm probably not gonna test you on it, I'm not gonna quiz you on it, but it's something you may see somewhere else. It's good to have knowledge of. Um, a geometric figure, which we'll work with lots of geometric figures in this class, is any non-empty subset of space. Then we have the term between, so this is actually our um, third term on this page, and the term between is used when any two points, um, or any points between two points on the same line, or a line segment. So. Here, if you look, we have points A and C. B is between those two points. Or if I look at points A and D, B is between A and D, and also C is between A and D. Right, so next, we have our undefined term um, of the line segment, and I talked briefly about this earlier. So a line segment is just part of a line. 
So remember, if you have a line, it goes on infinitely in either direction. And I said, even though a line has a length, we can't really measure a line because it goes on infinitely. But we can measure a line segment. And a line segment, it's part of a line. It consists of two endpoints and all the points between them. So if you look down here, here's a good example of a line segment. It's like you're cutting out piece of a line. Um, and you name it by its endpoints. The order doesn't matter, so they call this segment AB or segment BA. Um, notice when you write it with your symbols, it's very similar to a line, except uh, on a line you had the line with the arrows at the end. Here, your segment is just a straight line above the two named points. Okay, so next we're going to look at a define term, and this define term is going to be array. Okay, next um, we array have is um, part of another, a line. And even though it says defined terms endpoint, here, this falls the under the, on the line, undefined um, term. On so this is an endpoint. undefined term, so basically, and it is a array. Endpoint. It's going to be your um, starting array point. is part of a line as well. Right, so there's our but starting point, array is and different then than a line segment the because array it will, consists of um, one endpoint, part of the line after the endpoint, and, and then all the points of the line infinitely of one side of that endpoint. So basically, in the direction of the other. When point. you have an array, so go on you have an endpoint. That other so point. here's our endpoint, and um, then now the when array, you name array, the, the important thing side of your endpoint, and it extends on infinitely, always has to be first when you name um, array. When you so name for the first one, array, we have array A, B. It is very important. The naming matters here. So it your endpoint always comes um, first. You name it by two points. You always start with the endpoint My first, so we have right. ray A, B, and that is, the endpoint is right. A, so we have ray A, B here, here. Um, A is the endpoint. Um, if I were to say ray the right hand B, side, A, you see ray B, that means A. that my ray and starts B at B is the endpoint. So B is listed A. first when you name it. So the order doesn't the matter thing here. Is when you name and it, notice when you name it, letter um, that comes ray first A, B, is the endpoint over the top. And then the other point have is one that is just an arrow. The, you line, have the line created the arrow and after end. the ray or the half of the So you put basically part of the line segment and part of the line over top of that ray. Our next defined term is going to be opposite rays, um, and really these are two rays that share the same endpoint and they form a line. So if you have a line with three points on it, for instance we have a line right here, um, C is that middle point, and that's going to create your opposite rays. So we have ray CB, which goes from C through B, and then we also have ray CA right here. And those are opposite rays, and again, you name opposite rays just as you would name a ray, so the naming is the same. The endpoint of the ray is the first letter in the ray. All right, and I want you to take a minute, pause the video, and see if you can um, answer these questions. So I want you to use this figure right here and name the segments in the figure. Can you list different segments? Maybe give us like three different segments in the figure. Um, name the rays in the figure, so find some different rays. And then the rays that you name in B, which ones are opposite rays? And again, pause it for a second. Try to do that, write it on your paper. It's good practice. And then come back and check your answers. All right, so for the segments in the figure, we have, we can go, we have segment DE, um, we have segment EF, or we could have segment DF. So all of those, so here's one, here's another, or we could also call this whole thing a segment. Those are our different segments in the figure. All right, when we name rays, we could have ray, we start with D as an endpoint, it could be DE, or another way to ray that, name that ray would be DF, again, same ray, you're just, this, D is the endpoint, but it goes through E or F. Um, we could have ray EF, or we could have ray, 
Um, if we use f as the endpoint, we could do f. Oops, let me fix that. It's not an f. Okay, we could have ray f e, or another way to name that would be ray f d. It just depends on what endpoint or what point on the ray you use. Now, if we look at these, which ones are opposite rays. Actually, I did miss one up here. Um, we have ray EF, but I could also do ray ED, where I start at E and go through D. And that, if you look right there, these would make up our opposite rays. So we have ray EF and ray E, -E excuse me, ray ED that make up opposite rays. All right, so here's just a little activity to help you see if you understand the nomenclature, the symbols along here. So I want you to, before you listen to this, pause the video for a second again, try to draw it on your paper. So take a second, try to draw it on your paper, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so hopefully you guys pause the video and you try to do it. Um, so step A. They asked for three non-collinear points. Remember, non-collinear means not in the same um, line. So I'm going to make point M, point N, and point L. All right. Then they want us to draw, and if you notice the symbol here, it's line MN. So through MN... And again, I apologize, it's not going to be super straight. My pencil doesn't draw very straight on here. But there's my line MN through M and N. Next, they want, and this remember means a segment. So segment NL. So that means N and L. These are going to be my N points. So it's going to go from here to here. So there's my segment. And then the last one we're going to do is Ray LM. And because L is first, that is the endpoint, and it is going to start right there and go through M. A little bit better. All right, so that's what your figure should look like. Now, your points might be in different spots, but through MN, you should have a line through LM with L being the starting point, array, and then a line segment between N and L. Okay, now um, we've talked about undefined terms, defined terms, and now we have our first postulate. So hopefully you've created different sections and your different sections. Go ahead and um, create a section for postulates. And remember, these are things that we accept to be true. We just don't prove them. We don't write a formal proof for them. So the first postulate we're going to talk about is between two points or two points determine a line. So between any two points, there is always exactly one line. Um, here we have points A and B, and through A and B, there's exactly one line that you can draw um, to connect those two points, and it makes line T. So through any two points, there's always exactly one line that can be drawn. Um, another definition that we have is when we have two or more geometric figures, their intersection is the set of points that the figures have in common. Um, sometimes it's just one point. Um, sometimes it's an entire line. Sometimes it's a plane. It just depends on the types of figures you have being connected. So, and we'll take a look at a couple examples in the next slide, next couple slides. Okay. So here is a postulate on the intersection of lines. Um, if two distinct lines intersect, then they intersect at exactly one point. This will always be true. They will always intersect at exactly one point. So we have here line AE. Let me see if I can make it work. All right, so here is line AE. If you can see that. And there's line AE. And then we also have line DB, which is right here. 
and they intersect and they meet at point C. So right there in the middle at point C is where they intersect. So that is the intersection of lines, and this is a postulate, so put that in your postulate section. All right, so here we have opposite rays, and they want us to name two pairs of opposite rays. We have two lines here that intersect at a point. So here's line MN, and then line um, PQ, or whatever you want to call it, and they intersect at point Q. So one pair of opposite rays would be um, XM and then XN. The other pair would be XP and XQ. Oops, I didn't do a very good job. That's ray XQ. So where the two lines intersect at X, that's going to be your starting point for your opposite rays. And here we have another postulate, and this one talks about the intersection of planes. Um, two, if two distinct planes intersect, then they intersect in exactly one line. So um, when two planes meet, they meet to form a line. So if you can see here, as you can see here, um, line ST is where those two planes meet. So if you can kind of imagine two pieces of paper with one passing through the other, um, they where they meet would form a line. I kind of think of it like when you fold a bunch of papers, that crease is where those lines meet. It's not quite the same, but that's kind of a good analogy. Okay, so what I would like you to do is um, take a look at this box that is shown, and I want you to see if you can find the intersection of plane ADC and plane BFG. Um, and sometimes it's good to trace on there. I'm not going to do that because I want you to take a look, but we will talk about the answer in a second. So take a second, pause the video, write down where you think the intersection of plane ADC and plane BFG is. All right, so you can see here um, here is plane ADC right here, and then plane BFG is right here. So what they have, where they intersect or where they meet is going to be right here. It's line BC. That's where the two planes meet. So they intersect at a line, and it's line BC. All right, the last postulate that we're going to talk about in this section is going to be the postulate that three non-collinear points will always determine a plane. If you recall, it takes two points to make a line, but any three non-collinear, so that means they can't be on the same line, um, any three non-collinear points will determine a plane. So through any three non-collinear -co points, there's always exactly one plane. Um, here we have points R, Q, and S. They're non-collinear. They're not all in the same line. So that makes them on the same plane. They define a plane, and they've called it plane P. Okay, so now I want you to look at the figure shown and tell me what plane contains the points N, P, and Q. So if you could, just like in your head, shade in that figure, shade in that side, that the plane that can, contains points N, P, and Q. All right, and if you look here, we have um, the bottom of our box is where we have points N, P, and Q. So it would be the bottom part of that box that contains all three of those points. So the plane that's on the bottom of the box is the plane that contains those points. And that is it for section one three. Um, you know, hopefully you took some good notes on the video and now you're able to do your homework. Um, and we'll be back later on with section one four. Have a good day.